Blessed is the man that walketh not in the council of the heathen, nor sitteth in the seat that is full, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in this Lord that see it at sunrise and sun long, him I go there like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bring a fruit to the seas, and he never have a and whatsoever him jewel shall prosper. Yay! The heathen them now, they saw them there like a chap with the wind river tower. Therefore, the heathen them never go tamp on the judgment of the cinema and them in the congregation of the I trust for the Lord God. Ja, love the way of the I trust and the way of the cinema and them always and always I go perish. Let the people of the most I God say, Ja, and the my way from my be a tailor, exact beer, tanaistalina bashante shante shante shante. This is the black pot, aka Kuku Shodama, where we speak truth to power. And my name. Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot. And each time this black pot sits on the fire, there is something super sumptuous cooking. Ingredients of so many different types, shapes, and sizes, aromas, and even flavors. Put aside all their differences and relocate into the black pot where they are subjected to some good amount of heating. They produce food in the aftermath. Ironically, they do not even partake in the eating of the food. It is as the eaters who do. Yet every time, the ingredients and the black pot will collaborate. Oh yes, to produce sumptuous food in all its palatability. My brother, my sister, what lesson can we derive from this? It's a lesson of selflessness. It's a lesson of generational thinking and a lesson of sacrifice. If you are not ready to sacrifice for your nation, my brother, if the indigenous of a nation are not ready to think generationally and to also think selflessly, that nation ceases to be a nation. It is an empty box. At your office, how do you behave? Do you steal from your office? Do you steal from your workplace? Are you a factory hand? Do you pocket some of the products illegally? Are you a thief? My brother, my sister, we have to all come together and make sure that we work towards the upliftment of our nation. And in working to uplift the nation, that starts with your work at home. How do you treat your family? Are you beating your wife every day? You are not deserving of being called a leader. Do you provide for your children? Do you provide for your family? Are you a loving husband? And if you are not a husband, are you a brother? How do you treat your sisters? How do you treat your brothers? How do you treat your father? How do you treat your mother? My brother, the way the family is built is the same way the nation is built. If you can't handle your family well, you are not deserving of being a leader. And not all of us were born to be leaders. I was not born to be a leader. I was born to be the maker of leaders. Hallelujah. How many people will understand that? Understand your destiny. I'm not a leader. That's why I always want to push people forward to be leaders. We will stay behind and lead the blind. Think about it, my brother. That is why we are doing a 16 regional tour of Ghana. Going round and talking patriotism, raising leaders from the next generation. Oh, my brother, this is good news. Our nation lacks patriotism. People are stealing. When you steal from the government, your family claps for you because you are smart. When you are employed by the government, oh, it's time to be happy. They are not thinking about your service to the nation. And when you even ascend into or onto political positions, it's time to steal. When we are called into political office, it's time to loot, create, loot, and share. My brother, this is what we are telling the next generation. If this dirty phenomenon continues, then we will all be paralyzed as a nation. My brother, do you agree with me? 
We are going from school to school, catching them young. Sometimes we jump into the market space. We dance azonto. We dance reggae to get the people together. Then we give them the message of patriotism, loving our nation. If we don't love our nation, nobody is going to love this nation for us. I've always told you a story. As a little boy growing up in a compound house, there was an old woman who used to wake up and then go and bath in the morning whilst we all sat down and watched in the bathroom. My brother, you know what? Anytime she came out, her grandchildren and children would rush to get her bucket of water ready. They would carry it into the bathroom. And when she finished and she was coming out, they would rush again and carry the empty bucket from her hand. And when her children were not around, we did that because we had learned from her children. And there was a competition as to who would collect the empty bucket from the old woman's hands. If we all treat our nation like this, observers will treat our nation the same way. But if you are fond of insulting our nation, stealing from our nation, treating our nation like a stepchild, my brother, at the end of the day, foreigners will help us insult our nation and steal from our nation. Do you agree with me? We are not sponsored by any political party. We are not sponsored by any company. We have written letters to all these people. Some political parties have given us money, two of them. The NDC's Mahama gave us 20,000 Ghana cities. Shri Abosum gave us 10,000 Ghana cities. And then the GTA, Ghana Tourism Authority, gave us 20,000. So in all 50,000. We have spent this money long ago. We have done half of Ghana. We are left with the other half. Please continue to donate. Now, when they realized that the impact was so strong in the schools we went, politically, they are trying to sabotage us by telling us, you need this paperwork, you need this paperwork, you need that paperwork to be able to do this. Hey, listen, we don't need any paperwork. As long as it is patriotism, even if they don't allow us using political shenanigans, gymnastics, and underpinnings, we will go to the marketplace and the private schools and also on the street. Donate to us. Send us Momo via this number. It's a merchant line. Anywhere you are in the world, you can send any amount of money. We shall receive it and acknowledge you. Or you can send it via our bank account, which is a GT bank account. Yes? And it has the SWIFT code there. We will accept it. And then we'll splash your name and the amount you sent to us so transparently. We always treat that. Permit me. And I apologize for the long introduction. My name Black Rasta. It's the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushinome. And today we are doing 30 minutes. We've done 10 minutes already. 10 minutes for the first half and second 10 minutes and the show will be done. Come here, my youth. Watch this. Now the very first story we are looking at today says, Mahama must pull out of 2024 elections. Who is saying this? His name is Salam Mustafa. We all know Salam Mustafa, don't we? Who is he? Run the story, my youth. How you mean? Mahama has no moral right to contest 2024 elections. And this is Salam Mustafa speaking. He is the national youth organizer of the new patriotic party. So you know where he's coming from. Now, the national youth organizer of the new patriotic party, the NPP, Salam Mustafa, has stated that John Dramani Mahama lacks the moral audacity to contest a president as president in the upcoming general elections. According to him, the flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, the NDC, lost all credibility during his last time in office and therefore should not have come back to contest again. Now, the MPP youth leader was speaking in a radio interview in the Ashanti region as part of his national youth campaign tour of the region which started today, April 17th, so that's yesterday, right? And will end on April 20th. Ah, hallelujah. That's it. So you see, I like people like Salam Mustafa. They do politics like hypocrites. Politicians are so cunning, so sly. When they talk, be careful. You will know their callous. By their fruits, they shall be known. Now, this was the same message they were talking about Mahama years ago. They said Mahama did not have the moral right. He was under Atamils 
and he didn't do much and blah, 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 boom, 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 boom. Mahama won the next election. They called him the incompetent Mahama. We all called him incompetent. I'm one of those. He performed abysmally bad. So much corruption in the days of Mahama. We saw Woyome steal so much money in the days of Mahama. Today he's standing trial and he's been kicked left, right, and center. Mahama caused a lot of financial hemorrhage to the nation. We saw it. Mahama came back and said, Yes, I could have done better. There are some things that I did that Ghanaians applauded for. I will want you to look at the things I did. Now you are angry with me. I will take a back bench. Open your eyes without the political lenses and see what I did. And judge me by what I did. And the new government coming at the end of the day, put us on a beam balance and check it out and see which is heavier. That's what Mahama said. All of us are Pshia, what are you talking about? Who said Pshia? We all remember, right? Now, my brother, after Mahama left, if Mahama was a Sabunsam, Nana Akufuadu, Satan himself, came into power. And we saw the difference between Sasabun Sam and Satan Lucifer. Sasabun Sam is a local demon. Lucifer, Macarius the Satan, is an international demon. And we all saw it. What Mahama did and what this guy did. Today, Mahama doesn't need to campaign anymore. All he does is that, please look around Ghana. All the edifices that you see that are sparkling beautiful, they will speak for me. Circle Dubai, the numerous hospitals, the schools, and all that. He says they will talk for me. And this is what Ghanaians are saying. But li listen, don't listen to me. I am always with the opposition. Every time. Next election, when NPP goes into opposition, you will see me with the NPP. It's always been like that. We proper thinking journalists are always with the opposition. Because when they are in opposition is when they start to think like human beings. But when they are in power, they are animals who don't feel for human beings. Do you agree with me? They only start to think like human beings when they are in opposition. They will bring out all the rot, all the documents showing corruption. But when they are in power, they sit on that like a golden throne, a throne of corruption, and they are okay. Follow me, let me tell you something. Watch this. Hey! When they said all those things about Mahama, incompetent Mahama, thieving Mahama, when they came into power, were they able to mention one thing Mahama did in court? So that at least we all would say, yeah, we voted for you because we said Mahama was corrupt. Mahama did this. His people did this. Have they been able to jail one cockroach from the Mahama administration? One lizard. Maybe they are yet to jail a frog. Maybe a mosquito. Maybe an agama lizard, maybe a wall jackal. If they are able to jail a cockroach, then we will clap and encourage them to try and jail a goat next. And then from a goat, we go to a sheep. Then all the way to the elephant. The little ones, all the way to the big ones. They have not been able to jail anybody. Can I trust people like this? Mahama said only two days ago that if he happens to be president again, all the Nana Akufu Ado regime ministers and Nana Akufu Ado himself, they will account for their tenure, accountability and probity. This is what I have my uh, eyes on. Mahama is not campaigning. He's sitting down and what he did as compared to what this dirty government is doing. My brother will speak. If you think Mahama doesn't have the moral right, bring his photo. Salam Mustafa. I'm going to end with this. Salam Mustafa, with all respect. If you think Mahama does not have the moral right to contest the 2024 elections into 2025, please, all the things that he did immorally, all the stealing and the corruption, prove to us that you mean your worst and you are not hypocrites. Jail him. Take him to court and prove that he stole, that he was corrupt, that he was immoral. Then we can say, 
out of his immorality, he doesn't have the moral right. Until then, you are all dirty guys in, 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 in politics. That's you know. You think we they play for here. You think say you day wise. You come and say all those stupid things all over the place and make us look like children. This is a thief. This has stolen this. Bring this document. Kweku Baku carried all the documents from Harvard University all the way down to Timbuktu University. Splash all the doc documents of corruption in the days of Mahama. We need those documents in court to jail all those people. All the documents all of a sudden are frozen. Next story. Now the next story, and we're going to keep our time. Akufuado takes a big laugh at critics. Yesterday we applauded Nana Akufuado and said at least he's jailed the mass lock leader. Albert, she's not in Ghana. She stole so much money. Ah, Adam and Eve story. Adam had a wife called Eve. Has anybody ever thought about the fact that Satan could also have a wife? Does the Bible talk about Satan's wife? What was the name of Satan's wife? Do you know? If Satan had a wife at all, that wife is that mass, mass lock woman. She looked at Ghana like, you know, there are some people, they are blood testing. They are choking you with a knife. As you ask me, man, come me one man. Me pa jo, me ma be u. Me na me jo, me ma no de. You kill a thing. Shake you. And blood is draining and they are watching you. Blood testing. Who soon cry no ye no more. She looked at Ghana, suffering and still stole so much money from Ghana. She said she was sick and no doctor in Ghana could heal her. No doctor all over Africa could heal her because her disease was unique. First time, she flew all the way outside Africa before the court said she must go to jail for 10 years. Now they are thinking about repatriating her, bringing her back here so that we put her in jail. What's her name? Sedina Tamaklo. Do you all remember? We applauded Nanado at least for doing that to the woman, and, but, there's still another woman who is the second wife of Satan. The one who had so much money under her bed, plenty money in her wardrobe, and her maid servants had a field day. Picking the money and throwing it and kicking it. Hey, magic! Throw money in the air. Kick it, magic! And go out. Their boyfriends, they bought them cars. And bought Good class houses in good class areas from one woman's money. At a time, there was a ghost who was even sending Momo to the, the dead man's children. Magic in Ghana politics. Did she go to jail? What happened to that story? It's a question for the ghost. Nanado is laughing. You know his signature. You see that he's doing it there. You see, met money, met money, met money. I go open your eye. <laughs> May God open your eyes. How Akufu Ado mocked naysayers after commissioning Kumasi Temal plant. Open up the story, my youth. Watch this. It says the president of Ghana, Nana Ado Dankwa Akufu Ado, on Wednesday, that's yesterday, April 17, 2024, commissioned the Kumasi one Temal power plant which used to be called a Mary power plant in the Ashanti regional capital Kumasi. Now before the commissioner of the plant, the president was criticized by a section of the public, mostly members of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, after an advertisement by the Volta River Authority revealed that the African and Middle East Resources Investment Group plant, a Mary plant, which was relocated to Kumasi from Takrade, will be Recommissioned with the new name Kumasi One Thermal Power Plant. The critics of the president argued that the recommissioning of the Ameri plant, which was acquired by the John Dramani Mahama government under a, a new name by President Akufuado, is an example of the president's attempts to take credit for the achievements of other governments. Well, President Akufuado had a word or two for his critics at the commissioning of the K1 TPP. 
Now, the president, after touting the benefits of having the K1TPP in the Ashanti region and commending all stakeholders who helped relocate the plant, took a swipe at the critics. The president, with gestures, told the critics to open their eye, shine your eye, as we say in Nigeria, in order to see the developmental strides the country was making. To top it all, VRA provided all the funds for the construction of this station, including land acquisition, permits and licenses, preparation of environmental and social impact studies, civil works, electric, mechanical works, and commissioning of the plant, he said. He added in chief, Mr. Nyamese, Obebiyewani, what I pray for is for God to open the eyes of our leaders who are not appreciating our developmental efforts, for them to see and appreciate our efforts. Dash it away. You see, Nana Akufuado is a very dangerous man, a dangerous dwarf. Very dangerous dwarf. You know why? There were those who were in opposition criticizing Ameri, calling the contract dubious, and how they were going to jail the people who signed the contract. And we were happy. Oh, yes! Anything, anybody who steals our nation must go! They came into power and extended the contract. Ah! We are come for. No! Yeba! Yeba cho! Hey! Is you aware now did here? Hey, yeba bet it! By no my extended conform contract, say hey, because we are the end at the year day. Chrono day. That's almost the same thing. But of course, give credit where credit is due. And Mary is still here. They have still been able to build out of the Ameri deal. They were able to ask Ameri to build a plant for Ghana instead of renting it from Ameri. Jesus. That's common sense. Do you get it? Hey, we have a contractor who comes with a machine to build blocks for us. Yeah, three blocks, no, Kasa, to a point we said, hey, contractor. Now, machine way, crowd, yes, crowd, do. Yeah, pay back home. I said, machine way, me, kwana, me, to me, yeah. Sa, and they, yeah, back home. Hey, I'm back, man, yeah, way. Oh, no, what, the papa. Oh, and I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, yeah, yeah. So now, instead of cutting the blocks and paying a foreign company, we have built something like that. From my understanding of the story in Kumasi, why Kumasi? Come, king, 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 king. I said, come here, king, 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 king. No call, no no call, no buddy. That's their cash cow. Their World Bank. Remember, traders threatened recently that what, 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 what. But I don't want to be so myopic and silly. Every part of Ghana is part of Ghana. Whether you do it in Chebi or you do it in Tumu, my village in Dolin Buzon, or Pang, or Swombising, or Zabregaga, or Durigaga, wherever you do it, Fabayrebe to Mechok, is still part of Ghana and the whole nation will benefit from it. Congratulations to Nana Kufuadu. May God open the eyes of more leaders and open your brain and open the eyes in your brain and open the eyes in your heart so that corruption in your regime will stop and this corruption money will be used to do more. Election year, they do magic. It's one of the magical pieces. That's shut away my youth. When we return, we get one last story. Remember, we have just five minutes more to go. My name is Black Rasta. It's a black pole. Hey! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs>
Greetings, countrymen. My name is Black Rasta. When I was growing up as a child, there was something called a courtesy for boys and girls that helped to train us and raise us up in patriotism. But today, a lot of this patriotism has been lost. Today, our children are beginning to lose everything in terms of our heritage. They have lost out on our history, lost out on our greatness. It is on the bedrock of this. I am embarking on a nationwide tour of patriotism. Remember, it's patriotism, not politics. We shall go to all the 16 regions of Ghana. And in every region, we will organize students and speak to them about patriotism. We will organize a small quiz competition where we shall give prizes out. And these prizes are going to be prizes that are souvenirs from Ghana. Right after that, we will organize a setting concert, either in the market space or even on the streets, accessible to everybody. And we will catch the music lovers and deliver the same message to them. It's on the bedrock of this. I would like you to be part of this. Please donate to this great cause. We are raising a next generation of patriots. It's the lack of patriotism that is making us steal from our own country. It's the lack of patriotism that makes us feel like when we steal from the government, we are stealing from space. It's the lack of patriotism that makes us owe allegiance to some foreigners more than us. It's the lack of patriotism that makes foreigners come into this country and behave like demigods and we see them as such. My brother, my sister, donate so we can move out there. Maybe you want to give us something else in kind. We are ready for you. Our numbers are rolling on the screens and you can donate into our bank account or onto our phone number and we will gladly appreciate and acknowledge you. This is the National Patriotism Tour that we have taken on ourselves to make sure that the nation, Ghana, stands tall again like before. My name is Black Rasta and I thank you for listening. God bless you. Ghana shall prosper. Ghana will rise again. Bless you. It's the Black Pot, aka Coco Showman here. We speak truth to power. We love you, we appreciate you, and we love you. Oh gosh. Let's look at the last story. Before the last story, let's look at your comments. Do you have comments? All right, so we'll take your comments right after this story and we close it off. So gather your comments. We're going to take the comments only once. Did Asante Ine secretly save Ghana from Hippic? Do you know Hippic? Heavily indebted poor countries. Hey, heavily. If they call your Hippic countries a curse, it's like Jabez. Until you pray against the Jabez curse, you'll be called Hippic. You stay there. I don't want to go into the history of Hippic. At a point, we were called Hippic. You know who did that? Osafu Mafo. He took us to Hippic. White people said, okay, we are ready to forgive countries that are so poor. But they have to accept that they are poor and useless. And if they are poor and useless, then we, will forgive them the debt. 
That's what they said. Mabuao. Se u si e kwam di uwa. Brabe me obi anaya di. Pat jina ha. Fante fose. Fante fose. Pado. Abonting. And accept. Tell everybody. Mi ye sen sen yo. Mi nyo. E kwam di nyo. I'm so useless. Feed me. Before I give you food. That's what they did to us. And we accepted it. We did. Heavily indebted poor countries. Osafo Mafo took us there and he proudly told us that, oh, don't worry, I took you to Hippic. I will come out. My brother, we borrowed so much money we couldn't pay. And we were told that if we accepted that we were highly indebted, a highly indebted poor country, they will forgive us. And we accepted that. It comes with a lot of pressure. To when you are traveling, these are the poor people coming. Poor nation that sarcastically calls itself the Gold Coast. Poor people. But today we are hearing from no mean person than J. A. Kufu. Hey, Gentle Jack, former president of the Republic of Ghana. He is a senior member of the Lodge, Freemasons. My God. You know what he said? You don't want to hear it. Run it, my youth. Watch this. Hey! Former President Kufo details how Otufo single-handedly rescued Ghana from Hippic. Hey! And look at the picture. Bring back the photo. Can you recognize everybody in the photograph? That is Kufo sitting there in the middle. Is Otufo himself. And that man with the Wild hair. That's Wole Soyinka. Professor Wole Soyinka. He was the one who said if Trump won the election, he would leave America. And truly, when Trump won, he tore his American residence into two. Pa! Like that. And left America. Now, anytime he wants to go to America, he goes for a visa. That's what I'm going to do to Baumia. But Baumia would not win. If Baumia ever wins this election, I leave you. Take your country, fry it into Chichinga and eat it. Run the story, my youth. Former President John Ajekumi Kufo has opened up about how the Asante Hino 2472nd single handedly saved Ghana from any economic catastrophe during his tenure as president. Speaking in a recent interview with Opemsuo Radio, was it Opemsuo? Former President Kufuor said that the International Monetary Fund, IMF, decided to throw out a request by his government to bail out uh, for a bailout program because of rumors of some corrupt activities at the Ministry of Finance. He said that at that time, Ghana had been classified as a highly indebted poor country, which made it difficult for his government to get the needed funds to run the country and was in dire need of the IMF bailout. Do we all remember the bailout? Former President Kufo said that when the O2-4 heard that the IMF had thrown out Ghana's request, he took action. And within days, the fund accepted Ghana's request. We entered into HIPIC as a country, and it was a dire situation. Ghana was struggling to receive foreign aid. So we engaged in negotiations with the IMF for two years hoping to resolve our economic woes. However, at the last minute, the IMF meeting omitted Ghana from the agenda due to reports of irregularities at the Ministry of Finance. At that crucial juncture, Otufo was scheduled to travel to America, where he had connections with influential figures. Just before his departure, he visited me at the castle, and I bid him farewell. The news of the rejection arrived just when he left. However, three to four days later, Juabin Hine visited me and I was, I was surprised to see him because I thought he had traveled with Otunfo. I briefed him on the failed IMF deal and urged him to inform the king when he leaves the country. He left the country. He is quoted to have said by Opimswa.com. He added, Juabin Hine wasted no time in conveying the message to Otunfo who immediately contacted me. The former president said that the Asante Hine Money to arrange for him Kufo, to 
to meet leaders of the World Bank and the IMF, which did not only lead to Ghana getting the needed support from the fund, but also helped the country to get out of EPIC. At that time, Ghana owed around 8 billion American dollars, but that approval saved Ghana over 4 billion. So what role did Osafu Mafu, the loud mouth guy, what role did he play? Do you remember Osafu Mafu told us that he took us to e EPIC and that he would take us out of EPIC? So the corrupt activities happening in Kufo's government, the alleged ones in the finance ministry, who was the finance minister at the time? Your guess is as good as mine. But I'm sad that a nation had to hang on on such a slim whisker of hope, foreign aid to save a whole nation, an IMF bailout, a country that thrives in the pride of being the Gold Coast, a nation that has all the mineral resources. Next time I meet President Kufour, I will ask him why. With all the mineral resources, we still needed IMF to bail us out. Foreign aid, beggars. Utufo had to be the king of begging. Connection man had to go and talk or had to be bailed out. You see, you see, you see, and sad, you see, Afata. Afata. Let say, time and now Utufo, or said to do the second. And now, now Utufo, ah, or talk to me, no, no. Sa, mra, oko. Abroshimaimo, Eko G, E free, Kakain Semno, Na E, Patapa, Ene San here, E here, Na Afina, E was a Yeshe, De Fata. We did the needed, all the needful. Now it's time to do the appropriate. I leave it here. Thank you, Otunfo. You saved Ghana, according to Kufo. Nana Edawasi. Piafo. 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 Why, Ebi? You see, a chromophobia, Omuwa, finance minister, Onte. You see, a maeska. How didn't you know, Omai, Kasi, yet to say, Omai, we. You walk, they be a, this is a la la su la la, sana etiti. And yen, ungu asye. I leave it here. My name is Black Rasta, and I want to say thank you. I appreciate you, and I love you. Can we see your message? You said we are done. Okay. When anybody says, Welcome back, Black. How do Isaka says, Peace, honor to my brother, Black Rasta? I was in an Uber the other time, and, he, and his brother here said, Oh, I am Audu Isaka. I'm a student of your class. I said, Oh, really? He said, I'll take you everywhere you want to go. I am a Boku guy. How do Isaka? Thanks for the ride. Just yesterday, another one called David, Kojo David. He took me in an Uber. And then he told me he won't take the money. I said, oh, please, please. He begged me, started crying. Please take the money. If I take this money, God will curse me. I said, ah, I never pay school fees before to you. I appreciate you and I love you. Now, Mom Pyramid said, welcome back, Black Rasta. The mouthpiece of our great ancestors. Keep the fire blazing, Grandpa. What's Kolo Kolo? What's Kolo Kolo? He says, Wayoi! Watching you live in Baytown, Texas. How do Isaka comes back and says, I really accept that you are the maker of leaders. Continue with a good speech. He says, Teach us! Abdul Dashena Shaba Amadou says, Welcome back, Black Rasta. Always speaking truth to power. Isha Allah Ghana will rise again. May Allah keep protecting you and keep blessing you all the time. Oy, oy. Gamelia Pasu says, Black Rasta, welcome. Now, Bon Pyramid says, We never told the colonialists we wanted to be divided, but they forcefully divided us in order to be able to achieve their atrocities. Africa must unite again. One love. I agree with you. Patrice Bundikubo 
Zachariah says, more fire to the Babylon thinking cap men. Let Jafire come. Now, Bon Pyramid says, I think my skin color should be a better visa for me to go around the world of Africa without any harassment. It's time we stop the foolishness of sabotaging ourselves at the artificial borders. That's right. Tom Poe said, as I said, I will never trust any politician in Ghana. As I said yesterday, my brother, the criminal woman politician case will never get anywhere because how can you send a criminal into exile before her judgment? My name is Black Rasta. Come here. Thanks so much to King Lagazi for paying us a visit. Lagazi, come up, come up, come up. King Lagazi came to pay us a visit. And my brother is here. Say hi to the people. Speak for about a minute, man. Talk about a minute. Say, tell, tell them something. Run it, Mayo. Blessed give thanks. You know, it's always a pleasure to meet, you know, Black Rasta. And anytime we meet, it's always a vibe. And I'll continue, you know, to tell you guys that continue to support us. You understand me? Because the road is not easy. We need to add them prayers almost all the time to press on hard. Big up yourself, Black Rasta. Big up yourself, King Lagazi. He's the one responsible for the collaboration between me and Anthony B. And more collaborations coming up. There's another guy here. He's from uh, 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 Don Poise. He doesn't like the camera. Come here. Oh, here about come. Come, quick, 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 quick. Come, 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 come. Move up. Yeah, that's him. He's from Don Poise in the Ashanti region. So the tree na kachi kachi chile am kabi bi chile am kabi bi kabi bi kabi bi a show a show talk. What ba am a port ni na to talk from? Then I say I'm in shrau. Don't pass it for you na chiamu chia chia chiamu. My name Black Rasta. I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you. Next time you're going to bring a ah. Bobu Wulomo. There's a man who is his grandson. He's here. Lenche, Lenche. Please also come. Sorry, bro. Bobu Wulomo. You remember Bobu Wulomo? Bobu Wulomo. A 12-year-old girl issue. His, his nephew is here. He's going to also speak to us. Uh, Lenche, Lenche. Speak, Ga. Tell them something. Hmm. Thank you. Oh, you are down, oh no. Jeff is also here. And uh, he's behind the uh, MC Arduino. Sorry, bro. Get up and come. Also come. The team members today, we are introducing them to you. He's all the way from the Volta region, but he doesn't speak a word of uh, airway. He has switched off our TV. Pressure, pressure. It's a pressure, pressure on us. <laughs> Why are you breathing so heavily? Uh, yes, uh, so that uh, so this is Jeff. This is Jeffrey. Yeah, Foley. Uh, he's also going to be speaking to us. So, Jeff, talk. Speak away. English. How about she? Keep supporting us so that our business can go on and we can reach out to more people promoting patriotism. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thanks so much. We appreciate you and we love you. Oh, my God. So these are the wonderful people. We have more. Uh, they are not on duty today. We run shift, 24-hour shift. I want to say thank you so much. These are the faces you see when the list comes out. The, you know, you see their names in there uh, behind the scenes. Sometimes we need to bring their faces so that when you are looking for me and you don't see me, you can find them. My name is Black Rasta. Come here. It's been the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo. Where we speak truth to power. We catch tomorrow, we will not be here. We're traveling to Nigeria. But we'll put out a documentary for you. Two schools that we went to, we are going to put out a documentary. So you watch that. So at 5 p.m. sharp, it will roll. Until then, hey! Boyo! <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,